All right, guys, this is a PowerPoint showing you the basic elements and principles of graphic design, getting you started in your graphic design course. So we're going to take a look and see which one of these elements or principles you see in art that you like. So the first thing we're going to take a look at are elements. So there are six basic elements of art that you can see in graphic design work. You can think of these as tools. So they are the things that help us make up any painting, drawing, design, photography, or any other kind of artwork that you might see. So the first one is a line. It's usually the simplest uh, element that we have. Lines can be merely just a point, or it could be something that's more two or three dimensional. You can have lines that are very explicit or some that are implied. You can have lines that are in all sorts of directions, such as horizontal, vertical, diagonally, straight, or curved. And of course, you can change whether they are thick or thin. Another element is shape. So when you combine lines into closed uh, forms, that's when you get your shape. So they're, all shapes are going to be two-dimensional, which means you have a height and a width to them. So um, shapes are going to be flat, and because of that, you can express them as length or having length and width. They could be very geometric, or you could have some that are more organic, like what you see in nature, or free form, where there's really no rhyme or reason for them. Now, if you take a two-dimensional shape and add a third dimension to it, when you add height, width, and depth, you get form. So form is when you have any of the shapes converted into three dimensions. You can also have some free-flowing abstract forms. Space. Space is important because it shows the area between and around objects. You can also have what we call negative space or white space. And that's usually where you do not have anything taking up um, any of the area on your artboard. Real space we know is three-dimensional, but in visual art, with anything in graphics, it's going to be two-dimensional. So we use this to help give a feeling or illusion of depth. Color. Color is incredibly important in art. And that's one of the main things that we use to add expression to our artwork. So with color, you have three main things. You're going to have the hue, which is primarily the name of the color. You're also going to have value, and that's how light or dark you want each individual color to be. And then the intensity, how bright or dull is your color. You can also have color in categories such as cool or warm. And those help generate a sense of feeling with your artwork. Texture. Texture is another very important element because a lot of graphic design work is seen and not felt. So you want to bring in emotions of feeling into your work, and that's where texture comes in. Textures can be rough or smooth, bumpy, soft. Um, it's something that you're going to have to give the illusion of we can't really see um, the pricks of a porcupine needle, but if you draw them correctly, we can get that feeling of them. So, of course, since they're two-dimensional, whatever you touch is going to be smooth, but we want to give the illusion of something pricky, prickly. All right, next we're going to look at the principles. So if the elements are the tools, the princip principles are the rules what we can do with all of those tools and put them together to create our art. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is balance. So balance can be thought of in three different ways. It's really how well do you distribute the objects of your artwork. So if it's symmetrical, then they're going to be perfectly balanced. Everything is going to be um, aligned uh, equally on all sides of your artwork. Asymmetrical means that one side is going to be heavier than the other side. And then radial is when you have your elements around a central area. Next, 
part is emphasis. So emphasis is something that you do with your artwork where you have something that's going to catch the viewer's eye. You can do this by contrast, having something significant that stands out because of the size difference, color difference, texture difference, or even shape difference. Movement. So movement is where you give the illusion of movement for your viewer's eye. So um, you, this could be used with creating different lines or different edges, shaping, shading, coloring, all can give the effect of movement within your artwork. Patterns. Pattern is just the repetition of an object or symbol all over the work of art. So in this example here, it's just a bunch of circles that get repeated to give the illusion of a fish within water. Repetition goes with patterns. Repetition is going to make your work seem more active. So it's just adding the same element over and over again, adding some unity within your artwork. Proportion has to deal with size. So proportion can have um, where you're showing things correctly for size with the human body, where um, all elements fit in a natural sense, or you can show proportion where you have one aspect larger or smaller than the other, or even an amount of something. So it helps create unity when things are kept within proportion. Rhythm. Rhythm is created when one or more elements of design are going to be repeated to help give a more organized movement. So rhythm is essentially when you are creating the feeling of movement, um, such as a music or dance within your artwork. So if you're going to keep your rhythm exciting and active, such as this example here, you have to have a lot of variety. So this artist used different lines and um, have them arranged in different ways and thicknesses to help show their rhythm. Unity. So unity is when your artwork is in harmony. So that means all parts of your artwork have a sense of completeness. So you don't necessarily have a lot of asymmetrical work. It's going to be more symmetrical so that things are even throughout. All right, so those were the elements and principles of graphic design. So now what I want you to do is to get started on your elements and principles of design badge that you're going to earn. In order to earn your badge, you're going to create your own PowerPoint or keynote presentation that showcases examples of artwork that you personally like. So I want you to find artwork that you like, and then you're going to tell me which elements and principles the artist used within that piece of art. You are going to have to find at least enough examples of artwork that you like so that each element and principle that I just talked about are correctly identified. You can have one piece of artwork that ends up displaying multiple elements or principles. The goal is to show that you understand how rhythm, movement, line, shape, how all of those are actually used and identified in real artwork. So find artwork that you like, create your PowerPoint or keynote presentation, make sure that you label which principle or element is seen within the artwork, and then you're going to upload your finished assignment into Canvas. Here's an example of a PowerPoint that somebody was already putting together. So in this one they're showing a piece of art that they like, and then they are showing that they really like this one because it shows texture where the face of the person looks like grass. So the artist tried to make it um, look like both grass and a face. So you could also use this one to show space because it's showing such a larger head and then the little small horse. So this is just an example of something that you can do. So now I need you to go find artwork that you like and then tell us uh, what principles and elements you find within it.